So, welcome everyone. We have last class we did something on Miller indices. So, we will continue our discussion on that. Uh, two important results in Miller indices. One is that for cubic crystals, for cubic crystals see it is very important to know the plane normal. So, suppose we have a plane h k l. So, we want to know what is the direction which is normal to this plane. Now, for cubic this is very simple because the plane h k l is always normal to the direction u v w. So, if direction is given sorry um, made a mistake here uh, direction h k l itself direction h k l. So, same indices. So, nothing can be simpler than that. What is normal to 1 1 1 plane? the direction 1 1 1. What is a plane which is perpendicular to direction 1 1 0? The plane 1 1 0. So, they are mutually perpendicular, but uh, we need a proof of that. So, we will give that proof and the another important result is the weiss jones law. Which we will see. So, let us try to look at these two things. So, first let us prove this property of cubic crystal that the h k l direction is perpendicular to h k l plane. So, let us assume that we have a cubic crystal system. So, in this case the crystal coordinate system is very close to Cartesian coordinate system although it is still not Cartesian because crystal coordinate system is still the vectors are of length a. So, they are not unit vectors. So, these are the three basis vector let us say. So, we know that a. So, if if we want to write it in terms of the corresponding uh, unit vectors which are let us say i j and k that is your Cartesian system. Then a is simply a times i b is simply a times j this is the simplicity of cubic that although the vector is b at 90 degree to a but length of that vector is, has, is same as that of the vector in the x direction. So, a, b and c are equal for cubic. Or you can say length of vector a, length of vector b and length of vector c all are equal and we are calling that a. So, vector c also becomes a times k. Now, let us introduce our plane. So, let us say that this is our plane. This is the h k l plane and we are looking for the normal to this plane. So, let us say that this is the normal and we want to prove that this normal is also h k l direction, but currently we have not proved that. So, we cannot assume it to be h k l. So, we give it a general designation u v w. 
okay so that's our so uvw direction means in terms of vector because uvw is the miller indices of the direction and the miller indices of the directions are nothing but components with respect to the crystal basis and the crystal basis is abc so uvw vector vector uvw is nothing but u times a plus v times b plus w times c which in the cubic case it reduces to u a times i plus v a times j plus w a times k. So, we have used already the cubic property both of equality of equ equality of the three lengths that a, b and c are of equal length and also their orthogonality that a is parallel to i, b is parallel to j and c is parallel to k. So, we have used here using cubic properties. For other crystal systems you cannot write this, you will be stuck with u a plus v b plus w c, because a b a c are not equal, they are not necessarily orthogonal and so on. So, you cannot write a in terms of i and b in terms of j and so on. So, this is our so, this is our normal vector. So, let us give it uh, this was the Miller indices of the normal vector. So, let us say that the normal vector is n. So, this is the vector n. I cannot say that it is a unit vector. So, I am not using hat, I am simply using an arrow, but I, I know by assumption I know that this, this is a vector which I have assumed to be parallel to my plane h k l. Now, what does the definition of h k l tell you? That is the Miller indices of the plane, yeah, Samyak, yeah. Which one? Mm. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It means the uh, vec <laughs> yeah. I was just uh, emphasizing that that they are equal. I was not saying that they are vector. Thank you for indicating that. So, and thank you, thanks for the eraser provided by the notebook I can remove that. Okay. So, I was only underlining it while talking, but I was not saying that they are vector, they are scalars yes a is a scalar. The length of, so we have a cubic unit cell, so maybe I should draw that. So, here means this is a magnified version where the cube is not shown and the length the three edges of the cube are a a and a. So, that is the lattice parameter a is the lattice parameter. So, it is a scalar. Now, yes now what can you say about h k l? So, what does h k l plane mean? By the very definition, by the very definition of Miller indices, 
reciprocal of intercepts hmm? yes so reciprocal of intercepts in terms of corresponding lattice parameters what do we mean by that we mean that h is the okay so we mean by so let us uh, look at the intercepts so here is my origin and let us say oa is the intercept on in the x direction ob is the intercept on the y direction and oc is the intercept in the z direction. So, this means h is representing O a. So, what exactly that means? That the vector intercept O a I can write as h was reciprocal of the intercept. So, reciprocal of h will be the intercept. So, reciprocal of h will be O a, but in terms of the corresponding lattice parameter. So, I have to multiply it by a. So, that will be the magnitude or why complicate the writing. We can simply write O a as this and which means if, if I want to write it in terms of vector, I can write it as O a is equal to 1 by h vector a because o a is in the direction of the vector a along the x axis and this will become uh, in the cubic case this will further simplify to a by h i because a is a i. By the same token by the same arguments you can now write o b as a by k j and o c as a by l um, i j k k by l k. they are totally different quantities. So, now let us see, uh, let us recall that our plane was like this, our plane was A, B, C and I, O was the origin and I have developed now formulas for the vector O A, vector O B and vector O C. That means, it is easy for me now to write vector A B. Why I am interested in vector A B? Because vector A B lies in the plane O A, O B and O C are not lying in the plane and I want to explore the plane and I want to find two vectors in the plane. So, maybe A B and A C appear to be good choices for vector in the plane. So, A B becomes O B minus O A which we have just seen O B was A by K J minus O A was A by H I. maybe it would have been better to avoid I means one way of avoiding this k k interaction could have been to use e1 e2 e3 for the three basis vectors then we would have been safe 
so but now we are into it so let's not go back and revise that maybe in your notes later on when you are practicing it you can use e1 e2 e3 in this course also we accept e1 e2 e3 notation also so both are acceptable so this is ab so we have found one vector in the plane let us find ac now the other vector in the plane So that is OC minus OA. OC was A by LK minus A by HI. K by L minus I by H. Now, I will use this. So, I have what we have done, let us see. So, we have done a very simple thing that we have found a expression for the normal vector, a normal vector n, which we had here, yeah, here. So, that was simply a u i plus v j plus w k. Uh, uh, please remember that is, this is u, v and w is what we are unknown. We have assumed and this is what we are trying to find. So, the problem is that h k l is given, h k l is known, we know this is the plane and I am asking you to give me what is the direction normal to it. So, we have to find out u, v, w. So, the goal is to solve for u, v, w using the fact that the vector n is perpendicular to the plane and since n is perpendicular to the plane, n will be perpendicular to both these directions. So, we can use the dot product condition. So, since n is perpendicular to a b, what do you get? You get uh, a times u i sorry let us write that step also. So, that means n dot a b is 0 which will mean which will give us n was a u i plus v j plus w k and a was a b was a times j dot k minus i dot h and this is equal to 0 because the two vectors are normal. The plane normal is perpendicular to all the vectors in the plane. So, the plane normal is perpendicular to the vector a b. A, a are a scalar, so we can cancel because the other side is 0. So, we can divide it by a square and let us see other vectors. So, we will get now i j k are orthonormal vectors. So, we know that i sorry, we know that i dot j will be 0, j dot i will be 0 and so on. So, let us not write all the terms. We know that because of the orthogonality again these are not to indicate that these are double vectors already they have arrow above them or hats above them, but I was only trying to pinpoint. So, uh, the only terms which will survive is i dot i which is 1 and j dot j which is 1. So, i dot i term is minus u by h i dot i which will come from the first term of the first bracket multiplied by the second term of the second bracket and then j dot j will come from second term of the first bracket that is v by k and this is equal to 0. 
other terms are anyway 0 when you expand this product out. Okay. So, we have u by h is equal to v by k. Now, similarly you can apply the condition that n is perpendicular to a c. This will give you n dot a c is equal to 0, which is again a u i plus v j plus w k dot a a c remember we have found a c k by l minus i by h a times k by l minus i by h and this is 0. Again i dot i gives you a can be cancelled i dot i gives you minus u by h again and plus k dot k. So, here is k. So, you will get w by l. w by l is equal to 0. This gives you u by h is equal to w by l. So, u by h is equal to v by k, u by h is equal to w by l. So, from 1 and 2 you can write to w by l. And since these are equal ratios, let us say that this equal ratio is something. Nice to use some fashionable Greek letter lambda, say. We have introduced this is not a quantity which is defined, we are now defining it. We are saying that this equal ratio is lambda. So, then u is equal to because we wanted to solve for u v and w. So, that is why we called it that lambda. So, u is some lambda times h lambda times h v is lambda times k w is lambda times l. So, essentially we have solved for u v w except that we do not know lambda, but thankfully in crystallography you do not have to know lambda if you are trying to find out the Miller indices of a direction. Remember we said that Miller indices of a direction can be defined by any vector because 2 times or 3 times a given vector all will give us the same Miller indices. So, using that property this lambda actually can be divided. So, we can divide by lambda. So, u v w becomes lambda h lambda k lambda l and dividing by we can say we have said that that we can divide by any constant factor. So, dividing by lambda we get h k l and that is the beautiful result we were looking for. That is why cubic is so simple. So, u v w becomes h k l, but remember that this is for cubic only. In some other cases, this can still be accidentally true, but you cannot take it for guaranteed. So, suppose it was orthorhombic or tetragonal or no orthorhombic, let us say A, B, and C are not equal. Then along the x axis, you have a direction 1, 0, 0.
and this face of the crystal is again 1 0 0. So, here you are finding that 1 0 0 direction in orthorhombic also will be perpendicular to 1 0 0 plane, but this will this is limited to some such a special planes and a special direction arbitrarily if I see. So, if uh, but so 1 0 0 direction perpendicular to 1 0 0 plane in orthorhombic also, but if, if I say 1 1 0 because of the inequality of the a, a and b 1 1 0 will not be perpendicular to 1 1 0 plane 1 1 0 direction and keep remembering if I make mistake you correct can correct me also and you can always be also alert that whenever we are writing direction we are using a square bracket for direction and whenever we are writing round bracket we are using plane. So, it is not a general result, but for cubic it is always true. For cubic h k l direction because we have proved it h k l direction is always perpendicular to h k l plane. 